The purpose of this presentation is to discuss the various pieces of legislation surrounding the processing of meat, fish, and poultry products. We will discuss the differences between inspection and grading, what pieces of legislation govern the processes, and finally what needs to be included on the food labels of meat products. The Food Safety and Inspection Service within the United States Department of Agriculture enforces these pieces of legislation. Let's begin our discussion with the Wholesome Meat Act, which specifies the details of meat inspection. The Wholesome Meat Act requires that state government have local programs of meat inspection equal to those at the federal level. The USDA has the responsibility at the federal level for the inspection, grading, standard setting, and labeling of meat and poultry products. This mandatory inspection checks for wholesomeness of the animal product. So wholesomeness would be um, the presence or absence of antibiotics in the meat, um, the presence of injected hormones within the meat product, the presence of harmful bacteria, um, those types of things. If the product passes the inspection, then the round inspection stamp will be placed on the carcass. For fish, inspection and quality grading are both voluntary and are conducted by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The Wholesome Poultry Products Act of 1968 governs the inspection and grading of poultry products. Within this act, we can see here that the substance trisodium phosphate can be used to reduce the level of salmonella bacteria on poultry carcasses. Let's shift our attention now to the quality grading of animal products. Remember I said that inspection is mandatory. Quality grading is voluntary. And the quality grades when we're looking at beef, lamb, veal, pork, um, really looks at the amount of marbling, or those are the flecks of fat within the lean tissue, how firm the lean tissue is, the color of the lean meat, and then the age or the maturity um, or the length of time that the carcass um, was allowed to age before it was cut into the different retail cuts. You can see there that the quality grades are presented with a shield, whereas the inspection was noted with that round stamp. This visual gives us a better view of marbling. So you see there the marbling is the white flecks within the cut of meat. And the US prime, which is the highest quality of beef, veal, and lamb, you can see there there's much more marbling in the in the prime than there is in the choice or the select. When we look at poultry, poultry is again voluntary grading and it gives a yield a quality grade of A, B, or C. Some things that the reviewer will look at when they're determining the quality grade would be the shape of the bird, the distribution and amount of fat, um, freedom from pin feathers, cuts and bruises. So if you look here at the picture on the bottom, which one of these birds would have the higher grade and why? There's a second type of grading and that's the yield grading. And yield grades are based on the amount of usable meat in proportion to the fat and bone in the carcass. A yield grade of one to five will be given with a one being the highest yield and the five being the lowest yield. So if you look at the image on the bottom of the slide, the steak on the left would have the higher yield grade as there is more usable meat. There's more lean tissue in that one. When you look to the steak on the right, you see that there's more fat 
and people are not going to eat all of that fat. So that one's going to have a lower yield grade. So looking at this image, uh, we've got a boneless chicken breast on your left, and then we've got cut up chicken on the right. Which one do you think would have the higher yield grade? And why? The final type of legislation that we're gonna talk about is the labeling of meats. So the Nutrition Labeling of Meat and Poultry Act of 1993 governs what needs to be on the label of raw meat. So you can look through there, all the different things that are required. Have you seen this graphic on raw meat that you have purchased? As uncooked and undercooked meat is a potentially hazardous food, these foods must include the safe handling instructions on their label. So if you look through that, it gives some information on how we need to keep the meat refrigerated or frozen, thawed in the refrigerator or in the microwave, not on the countertop. Please not on the countertop. Um, second feature there is to keep raw meat and poultry separate from other foods. This is going to help to lessen the amount of cross-contamination that can occur. We wanna be sure to cook the meat thoroughly and then keep it hot um, until it's eaten and then refrigerate whatever you don't eat quickly. Finally here, based on the list of items that's needed to be included on the label, which ones are missing from this package? <clears throat> 